Hi, this is Jared. Epic's Battle Royale mode for Fortnite has been a huge success for the company, turning a failing game into an overnight sensation. Plus, it's free, which definitely helps, so you can go out and try it as you will. On the surface, there are many similarities to PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, but Fortnite is a decidedly sillier take on the Battle Royale genre, with the ability to build walls and ramps and such. Epic has also been happy to experiment with limited time game modes, holiday events, and more, and the result is a player base of over 20 million people. Given the light-hearted visuals, you might expect performance to be a non-issue, but that's only partially true. At the lowest settings, you can run Fortnite on just about any PC built in the past five years. Yes, even that potato sitting in your closet might work. But crank up the quality and resolution and the frame rate will plummet. Do you need to run epic quality though? No, and turning down some of those settings can give you a tactical advantage. Unfortunately, no amount of PC hardware will turn a 40-something like myself back into a competitive teenager or 20-year-old. But that doesn't stop me from trying. Officially, the minimum requirements for Fortnite are very tame. All you need is an Intel HD 4000 or better GPU and a 2.4 GHz Core i3. The recommended hardware is quite a bit higher, however. GTX 660 or HD 7870 with a 2.8 GHz or better Core i5. A minimum spec system will struggle a bit to hit 30 frames per second at minimum quality at 720p, while the recommended build is appropriate for 60 FPS at 1080p and medium quality. The Battle Royale mode is technically still in early access, but it's still worth checking out how performance is shaping up. Spoiler alert! Nvidia graphics cards are currently doing much better than the equivalent AMD GPUs right now, but a few tweaks to settings can get just about any decent GPU into the smooth 60 plus frames per second range. On the CPU side, Intel ranks a bit higher than AMD, but as we'll see in a moment, there are some oddities to discuss. For my benchmarks, I'm running around the Wailing Woods in the northeast corner. And while other areas may be slightly more or less taxing, it's a fair representation of the overall performance. I'm also running on the 2.0 version of the map, so places like Tilted Towers and Junk Junction are present. I've used my standard 1080p medium and maxed out 1080p, 1440p, and 4K epic settings for these tests, though I have plenty of other information on settings in the full article on PCGamer.com. I've also included Intel's current HD630 integrated graphics solution running at the low preset as a point of reference. Starting with 1080p medium quality, Nvidia holds a significant lead over AMD. The GTX 1050 is about 50% faster than the RX 560, even with half the VRAM, and the GTX 1063GB is over 25% faster than the RX 574GB. The performance is relatively consistent at least, so the lower AMD results aren't due to severe stuttering, probably just driver and engine optimizations, or a lack thereof. Nearly all the discrete graphics cards I've tested easily break 60 frames per second, though the RX 560 comes up just short. Intel's latest HD Graphics 630 meanwhile only manages 12 FPS at 1080p medium. Crank that down to minimum quality in 720p however and it turns in a respectable result of more than 30 frames per second. Previous generation Intel HD graphics solutions may need to drop the resolution scaling further, but at least Fortnite can run okay on low-end hardware. It won't look pretty, but it will run. For testing purposes, I've maxed out all the settings here, using the Epic preset with the resolution set to native, 100% scaling. As I mentioned earlier, Nvidia holds a clear performance advantage right now. The 1066GB easily beats the RX 588GB, by around 40%. The 1070 also leads both Vega cards, by around 15% in the case of the Vega 56. AMD clearly has some work to do to improve its Fortnite performance. Short of dropping quality a notch, you'll need at least a GTX 1060 to get 60 frames per second at 1080p Epic, or on the AMD side you'll need at least a Vega card. The Epic preset cuts frame rates by more than half relative to medium quality, which pushes the budget cards down into the 30fps range. The thing is, the Epic preset is overkill, and the difference between the high and Epic presets is pretty minimal, visually at least. That may change in time, but I'd strongly recommend most people stick with the high preset as a sensible maximum as it improves performance by around 25% over Epic. Everything I just said about Epic quality applies to 1440p as well, but consider this a worst case scenario, and things are pretty dismal. The 1070 just manages to average 60fps, but minimums are lower than that. The Vega cards come up short, and ideally you'd want at least a GTX 1080 to play at 1440p with the Epic preset, or just drop down to high quality, in which case the Vega cards move into buttery smooth 60fps territory as well. If you're striving to push a 144Hz display, well, you're going to need quite the beefy GPU. 
Even an overclocked Titan V doesn't quite hit that mark, though you'd be hard-pressed to tell, particularly with a G-Sync display. More modest cards like the RX 580 and 570 are sitting right at the 30 FPS threshold, and clearly these settings aren't ideal for that level of hardware. Can anything even hope to handle 4K at the Epic preset? Officially, SLI and Crossfire aren't even supported by Fortnite, and attempted hacks to force SLI on with high-end cards like a GTX 1080 typically result in lower performance. That means you're left with single GPU solutions. Surprisingly, even a GTX 1080 Ti with a modest factory overclock isn't able to break 60 FPS, though the Titan V does accomplish that feat if you've got $3,000 burning a hole in your wallet. AMD's Vega cards, meanwhile, can't even maintain 30 FPS at 4K Epic quality. Obviously, just like the Epic quality preset, 4K isn't something you really need, and we've repeatedly recommended 1440p 144Hz displays as an overall superior gaming experience. Pushing 8.3 megapixels around a screen simply requires a ton of horsepower, particularly with Unreal Engine 4 running at maximum quality. But at least this gives us a reason to look forward to the future Volta and Navi GPUs. On the CPU side of things, I've done testing with 4 and 6 core Intel 8th gen Coffee Lake CPUs and 4 core to 8 core AMD Ryzen processors. The results are a bit surprising, and part of the problem is that 100 player battle royale matches are more prone to frame rate differences depending on the server and proximity of other players. Strangely, the i7 8700K actually performs worse than the i3 8100, and the Ryzen 3 1300X also takes the top spot for AMD's CPUs at 1080p Epic. I'm running all of these CPUs using the same MSI GTX 1080 Ti Gaming X graphics card in an attempt to push the bottleneck over to the CPUs as much as possible. I suspect that the game engine has been tuned for 4-core four 4-thread four parts. Hyperthreading and SMT in general appear to reduce performance a bit right now, though the differences aren't something to really worry about. Jumping over to notebook testing, the mobile 1080 manages to take the top spot at 1080p Epic. This might be due to engine optimizations that favor quad-core processors, or just variations between benchmark runs, though it's worth pointing out that the GT73 VR does come with a factory overclocked 1080. The 1070 and 1060 mobile parts still fall behind the desktop cards, with the thin and light GS63 VR taking a bigger hit than the larger notebooks. The gap between the notebook and desktop GPUs is slightly larger as a result, with the mobile 1060 falling 30% behind the desktop part. The 1070, meanwhile, is 9% slower, while the 1080 is 8% faster. I suspect if I had tested the desktop cards with an i7-7700K, results would have been better, and future optimizations would likely change things. As always, thanks to MSI, who partnered with PC Gamer for our performance analysis articles and provided all the primary hardware used for these tests. I'm using MSI's X370 and Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboards with 16GB of DDR4-3200 CL14 memory. Most of the graphics cards are MSI's factory overclocked Gaming X series, except for the RX 560 Aero and the reference RX Vega cards. The basic hardware requirements for Fortnite are relatively modest, and you'll want to check out the full article on PC Gamer where I dig into the individual settings and discuss how each impacts performance. Most people should be happy with a combination of medium to high settings, with view distance being the only setting where you'll want to max it out. And if you're really going for a competitive advantage rather than visuals, the medium and low presets disable a lot of the shadows and can make it easier to spot opponents, all while boosting frame rates. That might not get you the coveted victory royale, but it's worth a shot. Thanks for watching.